What is going on, my fine people? Fine line seventeen twenty one checking back in here to give you guys my honest opinion, honest review on the not for resale Air Jordan Retro One OG highs. You had two pairs that released. You have the one that you see here, which is the Varsity Red version. Then you have another one that released, which is the Varsity Maze version. I want the Varsity Maze only because the fact. Once you have so many Jordan 1s in your collection, you start to become a little bit uh, fatigued with red. You know, I have Chicago's, Black Toes, Bread Toes, Band 1s, and Hi Mr. Holmes. So tired of seeing red anything on some retro 1s for me personally. Now, we all know the details on the shoe. Why they call not for resale. Nike kind of took like a off-white approach. You know, writing on the shoes and everything like that. Everybody should know by now that the most sought after Jordan is the Retro 1. When it comes to Jordan, the Retro 1 silhouette resells for the highest value. If, I, if, if you kind of get what I'm saying. Like, yeah, you probably have some type of Jordan that got a real high resale value with just, you know, because it might have been really, really limited. But for the most part, the Retro 1 is like the cheapest Jordan, the least made Jordan, and it resells for the highest amount. So that's why Jordan took the approach with the whole not for resale theme and placed it on the Retro 1. No photos going across the heels. Please crease going across the toe boxes, wear me going across the tongue. This shoe got general release. This other shoe has, sorry, this pair is not numbered. And taking a, a break and really paying attention to this, sorry, this pair is not numbered. The Hummus and Home is probably the Jordan 1 silhouette that most matches the leather quality on this shoe. Like, I don't give a fuck that people can say like, oh, the Hummus and Home was a clown shoe. It was a trash that shit trash and it was weird. It still doesn't negate the fact that it was one of the highest quality grades of leather placed on a retro one from heel to toe. See, shatter backboards and bread toes and shit like that, which a lot of people try to hold as the gold standard. The black parts of those shoes were cheap compared to the homage to home leather where each panel had thick Pelly Pelly leather. And that's the same for this. You can even tell from, say, for instance, the back of this shoe. You can look at that and tell that looks like a leather jacket. So the leather quality that they placed on these joints are very, very, very similar to the Homage to Home leather. Kind of like it's, it's, it's shitting on like shattered backboards and shit like that. Hands down. I, I don't give a fuck what nobody say. That that shadow backboard ain't shit compared to these. The Muhammad's the homes, the bands, and even the shadow for that matter. Uh just depending on which you know pair your shadow was. Now is this shoe worth the hype? For me it is. I like the way that it's a walking contradiction with the uh with the whole general release theme, because everybody know that this shoe was far from a general release. So that contradiction was pretty dope. You know, the whole concept of this shoe was dope as fuck. So it's one of them situations where a lot of people say, man, is it worth the hype? Yeah, it is because it's dope, high quality, good colorway. Me personally, like I said, I'm just not really a fan of this particular colorway because I have so many black and red Jordan 1s in my collection. But I will say this. When a lot of people say, you know, is it worth the $600 or even for certain sizes, shit, you might be paying eight, $900. The yellow pair is $1,000 pretty much damn near in every size. So when people say like, oh man, no shoe ain't worth $800 or whatever. So tell that to the person that wear Gucci, Louis, Prada, Christian Louboutin, whatever the case may be. No matter if this shoe retails at $160 and if I choose to pay $600 
for it, that's still the same way if a person go and buy Gucci at $600. No matter if the retail for a pair of Gucci's was $600 and the retail for this is $160, you still spending $600. So if you figure, oh, no shoe is worth, this shoe ain't worth $600, and that means the Gucci shoe ain't worth $600 because you're still spending $600. If you don't have that type of money to spend on a pair of shoes, then that's that's cool. If I didn't get this shoe at box price, I wouldn't have a problem with buying this shoe for resale because I actually would want the shoe in my collection. I would just prefer to have the yellow pair. So all I'm going to do with this pair is either use it for trade bait maybe add a couple hundred dollars on the top of it just to, so I'd be able to get the yellow one. So these right here is one of the dopest retro ones to come out this year, hands down, period. And the Union LA collab is definitely right there with these, if not like a doper concept, doper shoe. Definitely probably like top 10 on just like some all-time Jordan lists of retro ones period so you know that's just my take on these joints they dope they worth it for me please be sure to follow me on instagram follow me on twitter both handles are the same fine line 1721 please be sure to check out fine line 1721.com i don't have these on the site i'm not gonna stunt like i do but i do have concours up for sale I do have Jim Red 12s up for sale, Orlando Magic Retro 10s up for sale, which all will be shipping out early, all on fineline1721.com. Until the next video, you guys already know what to do. Be smooth, enjoy life, bless up.